G'day, Dylan from the Byron Bay Observatory here. Uh, this is not a proper edited video, this is just, I just wanted to have a little chat and get some thoughts out of my head, uh, particularly about the rise of AI, not AI, automated telescope systems, right? Um, you've probably seen them, there's the Unistellar, the Bayonis, the Dwarf, uh, the Sea Star, now the Celestron Origin. There's just all of these companies getting into this sort of new space of having a telescope that you can set and forget. That you can just plop on the ground, the images come back to you through your iPad or your iPhone or something like that. It's a really forward thinking thing. In fact, I made a video all about this years ago, before this industry popped up, talking about my ideal mount and how I would like a mount that would do this for me polar align itself so that I could get on with everything else. And the more I think about this, the more I think that this whole segment of the market is really sort of overthinking the whole thing. Um, you might have noticed that I haven't had any of these devices on the channel. I've been approached by all sorts of different vendors and it's not that I don't want to, it's just I've spent all of this time setting up the big rig and the observatory it's kind of not a space I'm in. I'm a hobby photographer, but I tend to do this all at home. And of course, these things are closed systems. You can buy one, and the most popular one seems to be the ZWOC Star at the moment, which seems to like a good product. It's got a lot of traction, very popular. There's a whole bunch of sort of science applications being done with it now with spectroscopy and stuff like that. Um, sky survey potential is great. Uh, but it is a closed system. It's closed not only for the fact that once they release a new one, you'll have to buy the whole thing again. Now, Celestron made their camera on the Origin hot swappable. I think that's a good thing because cameras are iterating so quickly. Why would you want to throw out the whole telescope just for a camera chip upgrade, right? But also, it's these things are also closed systems in the sense that you're kind of locked in to their ecosystem. You are locked into the ZWO software. It's a departure from this whole idea of everything being ASCOM compliant, so you can plug it into any software you want and run it however you like, which is not a bad thing. You know, I use an iPhone, it's a fairly closed system as well, but it's open enough that I can install any app I like, I can do virtually anything with it. I don't think the same can be said for these telescopes until people hack the firmware or unlock things. But I think my frustration with the whole idea of this automatic little telescope thing is that it's solving a problem which would really easily be solved in an open way, not in a closed way. What I mean is this. This is a mount. All mounts are the same. They're either equatorial or they're um, alt azimuth mounts and they just have to know where they are in order to get going. And polar alignment relies on the fact that when we set up the software to get good polar alignment, we want to adjust the latitude, the upy downy, and we want to adjust the azimuth, the lefty righty. So all this thing needs to do is spin that way and that way, and this thing needs to tilt up and down. They're the only two things a human needs to be involved with to set up polar alignment properly. Now, to solve that problem and to make these telescopes automatic, they've invented a whole new telescope. And from the beginning, right in my early video, I said that all that needs to happen is we need a motor here on the azimuth and a motor here on the latitude, uh, where is it, latitude, latitude here, to tilt the up and down. And if, if software had access to those two variables to change the angle on those two things, any mount, any telescope, could be controlled by software to be automatic. Especially now with strain wave mounts, where you're not dealing with counterweights and things like that. It should just be able to rotate itself and get into polar alignment. And the problem is the mount needs software to do that. It's either inbuilt into the hand controller, but it needs access to the camera in order to figure out where it is. And this is the problem that these automatic telescopes are solving. But this is a software problem, not a hardware problem. The other thing it's doing, the other, that's a gecko. The other party trick it's doing is live stacking, right? And that's not new. That's something we can do in software, any software. PixInsight has live stacking, third party plugins, Nina has live stacking, SharpCap has live stacking. If all of our software had access to these two angles to control, 
any telescope could align itself and then start live stacking. There is every potential that Nina or a plugin for Nina or any other software can do everything that the C-STAR is doing or any of the other telescopes and that can be solved with software. You don't need to buy a whole new telescope for that. I do wonder if there's a software developer out there who could do that because really all that is is a change to the user interface and the way we set up and use telescopes. Any software should be able to say get polar alignment and at the moment the human is involved in those two angles but once that's done everything else could be automatic. Go look at that, go live stack that, go send it to my iPhone, use a web protocol to send that to any device. Um, it's not, it doesn't strike me as a particularly hard thing to do and it means that we don't have these disposable units that will have to be thrown out the next time a camera is upgraded or there's a new version or version 2, version 3. Of course the other buzzword is AI now and everything is being AI everything. That's fine, you can build in these protocols into the software, again into the software that's setting up acquiring doing this one button push button approach to astronomy. It can deconvolute the images, it can use AI noise removal, it can stack the image itself and pop out an image. That's Again, that's nothing that's particularly unique to these one to these push button telescopes. It's something that we've been doing forever. We've just been doing it manually and it's something that can be solved in software. So if you are a software developer, I would suggest you could undercut this entire market simply by writing a good plugin for Nina, which changes the interface to something which is push button. Go find the target go take a bunch of images, live stack them, send the output through the web on a local web server to view on your phone or whatever. The only one of these devices I've been even remotely interested in is the Celestron Origin because it is a telescope that has all the glass and all the horsepower that I would expect from a regular big rig. I don't want to downgrade to a small rig just for the convenience of push button astronomy. Uh, but the Celestron Origin looks like it's not going for that price point where it's down at the lower level and lower is still you know anywhere from $700 to $2,000 and it's it's an expensive telescope but it does make no compromises so that interests me in a sense but it still makes me wonder why can't we just do that with literally any, any other telescope uh, if you're a mount manufacturer out there if you can get the latitude and the azimuth to be motorized so that we can control them via ASCOM, then any software can turn any telescope into an automatic telescope. And it really, that's the whole, that's the whole trick, right? That's the whole, put it down and let it polar align itself. And, it, and they don't even do that really, because they're all azimuth, they don't polar align, they just figure out where they are with star alignment. And then they stack short exposures, which don't reveal the field rotation. So they, they haven't really even solved the equatorial issue just yet. And yeah, everyone will say there are ways to do this equatorial, but when you go down that path, you're starting to use wedges and stuff like that. And then it's not push button anymore. Then you are actually working to get the equatorial stuff sorted out. Even those telescopes don't solve the equatorial problem. So I think this is a problem that we can solve almost entirely by software and some software developer could do this today, but it's also a problem we could improve with hardware just by having those two new motors in any uh, in any mount. Anyway, that's that's my thought. Uh, let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree, if you have any ideas, if thinking this way has given you some ideas of what the potential is for this more push button automatic astronomy. Um, I don't think it's, uh, yeah, I'm curious to see where the market goes. I'm not hanging my hat on any one product at the moment. I'm not really interested in a lot of the output from the, a lot of the sample images I'm seeing, they're just, they're nowhere near what I can do with what I've got anyway. So I'm not going to even ask for a demo or a sample or pay for a downgrade to, to what's here now. I, I don't think that they're toys. If they are toys, they're very expensive toys. I don't, um, I don't discount the fact that people enjoy it and use them. Um, but I do wonder if it's a little bit redundant. And I think uh, there's a better way to do this. Maybe? I don't know. Let me know your thoughts. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Star Stuff.